Hello to all of you fabulous breeders out there and such a pleasure to be part of the Breeder Summit again. Thank you, Heather, for inviting me again. And I'm really excited to share a very important topic, how to prevent cancer in dogs and what breeders should know about that so we can advise our owners and help them have puppies with a great chance of a long and healthy life. It's a lot to cover and let's get into it. So today I'm talking about how to prevent cancer in dogs. It's a really important topic and I believe that breeders really should know the ins and outs of this because we are in a unique position to help prevent this unnecessary early death in the puppies that we sell and give our owners a long and happy life as possible with their babies. So why should we care? Well, firstly, cancer is the biggest cause of death in dogs, in mature dogs. So it causes death in more than half of dogs which have already reached about seven or eight years of age. In fact, the rate of cancer in dogs is higher than it is in humans. And cancer in dogs is being looked at as a model for cancer in humans. They share the same environment as ours and they're a lot more susceptible than we are to the things that cause cancer because they are close to the ground where a lot of these toxins that we'll talk about in a moment um, are coming from. And also they don't wear shoes, so a lot of the stuff will get absorbed onto their feet or they'll lick it off their feet. So that makes them a lot more vulnerable. Plus there's other reasons why dogs are more likely to get cancer than humans, which we'll look into. So it is the biggest cause of death and we can do something about it by being aware and, and advising our owners accordingly. Of course, another reason why we should take a lot of um, notice of this problem is that it causes terrible suffering to both the dog and their owners and it's really um, horrible to hear that one of your puppies has ended up having a shorter life because of cancer. It can be very expensive to treat as well and so it's a real wealthy issue for not just our dogs but also our lovely owners. Now I, I touched on before how you know we can show some leadership here. Why should breeders know about it? Why should breeders be taking the lead to inform our owners about cancer and what they can do to reduce the risk of their dog dying from cancer. Well, the issue is really that we are the only ones who um, are in that position to advise owners early on in their relationship with their dog. I mean, veterinarians, of course, I am a vet myself, but veterinarians should be doing it. But unfortunately, um, a lot of the factors that cause cancer can either be um, advocated by vets, for example, commercial food, which we'll look at in a moment, um, and a lot of the products of veterinary products can cause issues as well. So, you know, we are the ones who don't have any stake in the game as far as, you know, making any money out of it. We haven't been indoctrinated at university. Um, we have open minds and we have owners um, there and available to hear what we have to say <clears throat> before they have a problem and not after the problem arises, which is when we actually want to make sure they understand how they can do something to prevent cancer. So the other thing is it's very, very good for your brand. If you can help people to understand these risks, they'll be so grateful. They'll be talking about it with their hairdresser, with their friends, their family, and you know that will help build your brand as a breeder who really does genuinely care about the fate of your puppies once they leave your home. I will be going through a lot of things. This is quite a complex issue, but as I said earlier, there's a free cancer guide that you'll be able to download from elitebreederformula.com forward slash free hyphen cancer hyphen guide. All the details that we'll be covering today will be in there with a whole lot more information as well. So don't worry about missing out on taking any notes because it'll all be there in that guide for you. So what are the factors that we know about that can increase the risk of cancer in dogs? Now, the first one is breed. Breed certainly makes a difference. Desexing age can, can make a difference as well. 
diet, exercise, the environment, and whether or not the cancer is detected early or not. All these things can play a role in whether a dog gets cancer and dies of cancer. So I'm going to be going through all of these one at a time. So starting with breed, this uh, table, this graph is actually in uh, the manual that you can download. So it just shows a whole heap of dog breeds here and the percent that die of cancer as mature dogs. So you can see it varies greatly between breeds from over 50% in flat-coated retrievers down to around about 15% for Shih Tzus. So breed has a lot to do with it. And here's just a snapshot of some breeds and their particular cancers that they're prone to. So we've got golden retrievers are particularly prone to lymphoma and hemangiosarcomas. Bernese mountain dogs are particularly prone to histiocytic sarcoma. The Great Dane and Irish Wolfhound are very prone to osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer. And the boxer and bulldog are more prone to mast cell tumours. So there's something in the genetics, obviously, that makes particular breeds more susceptible to some cancers than others. And that's the takeaway here. So be aware of your own breed's cancer risk as a breeder and therefore what the early signs of issues are for your breed's particular cancer risk, if you have a cancer risk in your breed. And then you'll be able to tell your owners what they should be looking out for so early detection can occur and early treatment can end up having much better outcomes than late treatment. So if you want to find out about your breed in particular, there's a really good resource at dogwellnet.com and you can go to the link to Purebred Dogs and find out what information is available about all kinds of diseases in particular purebreds and of course if you're doing a designer breed just check out the purebreds that your designer breed is derived from to get an idea of the risks. So dogwellnet.com. So then we come to desexing age and again this varies with different breeds. Now a lot of vets say that you must sterilize your dog before six months of age to reduce the risk of it getting cancer. That's what owners are being told. The truth of the matter is, is that it does depend very much on the breed. If there are breeds that are prone to mammary carcinomas, which is um, breast cancer, then definitely if we sterilise those dogs, those breeds are females before they are um, hit puberty, so yeah, before the first heat we can reduce the risk of mammary carcinoma or breast cancer coming up in those dogs. So I've got a list there of the top 10 breeds that are prone to mammary carcinomas. You've got Boxers, Cocker Spaniels, Dachshunds, Poodles, German Shepherds, English Springers, Brittany Spaniels, Dobermans, Toy Poodles and the Maltese. So there might be a case for those ones being sterilised early in general, um, the best age for other breeds is between 12 and 24 months and also for all male dogs. So that's a rule of thumb. Now we do have particular information on 35 breeds here derived from a study that was done that gives the best age for a whole variety of breeds. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so I've got this table in the uh, manual that you can download for free, How to Prevent Cancer in Dogs. So be aware of the best age for neutering for your breed and then you'll be able to advise your owners accordingly. And this is all around reducing the chance of cancer, serious cancers. Okay, so the next thing is diet. Now, diet can have a huge impact on cancer. And, of course, everything I'm saying here, keep in the back of your mind that dogs are a really good model for humans and a lot of the things that cause cancer in dogs also cause cancer in humans. So keep that in your mind as you listen to the rest of this talk. Now, in the left here at the top there, I've got a photo of a vet telling an owner of a new puppy to use only commercial food, 
because it's the only way that we can guarantee that your dog is getting all of the vitamins and minerals and other nutrients that it requires. That is what I was taught at vet school. That is what vets still say. Unfortunately, they set up people for a possible increased risk of cancer in their dogs because those kinds of foods are ultra processed foods. And that's what UPF stands for here in the in the heading here. Ultra processed foods um, are danger, a major cancer danger for dogs and people. There's a few reasons and all of these have been studied and researched and confirmed and I've got more information about those studies and that evidence in the manual that you can download. So there are cancer causing agents released whenever meat is cooked at high temperatures for example. There's mold toxins that often are introduced into commercial foods through grains and things that they use. There's preservatives, which can be cancer-causing, propylene glycol, BPA plastics, which are hormone-disrupting, and um, because they're hormone-disrupting, that can pave the way to cancer, especially for hormone-sensitive cancers, like ovarian cancers, for example. There's cancer-causing dyes. High plant oils and high carbohydrates are um, in most of these kind of commercial foods. And both of those are highly inflammatory and anything which causes massive inflammation will also predispose dogs and people and any animal to cancer. So there's some of the dangers in a nutshell. The other thing is that obesity is a major risk factor as well. And we want to advise our owners not to let their dog become obese. So exercise. Um, it's been shown that dogs that get to run flat out three times a week or more are a lot less likely to get cancer and die of it than dogs that are not. They've just put on a leash all the time. So keep that in mind too when you're advising your owners to let those dogs run a couple of times a week at least. <clears throat> and keep them trim. So the takeaway for diet is we need to be opting for high quality natural food. Um, as much as possible without artificial additives, preservatives and the like. What the research has shown is that including lots of omega-3 fats, for example, from fish oil and leafy greens and orange vegetables at least three times a week has all been linked to much better health outcomes for dogs and a reduced risk of cancer. So there is information on cancer prevention diets available in the manual. And if you download the manual at leapbreedformula.com forward slash free hyphen cancer hyphen guide, you'll be able to get all that information for yourself. Now, the environment is a source of a lot of toxins which are carcinogenic or cancer causing. For example, you know, one of the classics that a study has been done on is 2,4-D. It was shown exposure to 2,4-D chemicals on lawns has been shown to increase the rate of lymphoma by 70%. A big warning sign is any beautiful looking parkland which is perfectly green and not a weed in it. You know that there must be loads of chemicals being put on that lawn to make it so perfect. So I advise my owners and I suggest you do as well to stay away from walking their dogs on lawns like that. The trouble is that dogs will get it on their paws. Um, if it's off gassing, it'll be really low to the ground where they are, um, so they'll be more exposed to it. And they're likely to lick their paws when they get home, and, um, and that way they're getting exposed to it a lot more than we do. So best place to exercise your dog, if possible, is either on pathways away from lawns or in wild areas, if at all possible. And, of course, the same goes for lawn treatments in the home. There are lots of dangers in homes. We've got, apart from things in the garden, we've got new paints, floorings and furnishings, which can cause off-gassing of formaldehydes and glues and um, resins and all these things which uh, can be carcinogenic 
So if at all possible, go for new paints, flooring and furnishings, which are made of natural and non-toxic kind of substances. Tobacco smoke is another one that has been linked to lung cancer in dogs and esophageal cancer, mouth cancer. So if you're going to smoke, smoke outside, away from your dogs. Mold is a big one, just like it is in food with aflatoxins. Um, mold in the environment can also be very, very dangerous to people and dogs and be cancer-causing. Cleaners, go for, for nice cleaners which are natural. Don't go for all of the heavy-duty cleaners which often have loads of chemicals. I mentioned pesticides. And another one is electromagnetic radiation. So it's a good idea to keep um, Wi-Fi, power cables, switches, excuse me, especially dimmer switches and uh, also power lines. Um, don't position your house under a power line if you can help it. But if you can keep those things away from where dogs spend a lot of time during the day, then you can help them reduce their exposure to electromagnetic radiation, which can be cancer-causing as well. Another source of carcinogens is plastics and bright-coloured toys with the paints on those. Dogs might be eating out of a plastic bowl their whole life, and that can be an issue. Same with things they chew, like toys, bones, toy, stuff like that. So we should be advising our owners to use glass, metal or ceramic bowls and also to opt for more natural toys made out of uh, rubber, like the Kong toys, for example. Latex is okay, bamboo, hemp, cotton and really natural chews without anything added to them. Now we come to uh, medical toxins and I did sort of allude to this when I was talking about veterinarians. Um, unfortunately, the, one of the worst culprits for causing cancer is flea and tick treatments. Um, I did a lot of research on this. All of the uh, products that you can see on this screen have all been linked with cancer. They have ingredients which are, have been found and proven to be carcinogenic. I've got a list of them all there. And there's more. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So what can we do? best thing to do is to educate our owners on all the different ways that we can manage fleas and prevent flea infestations and also minimising the amount of use as much as possible um, of flea and tick treatments. Like there's no point doing a spot on every month on your dog if it doesn't have fleas, like no point whatsoever. So you know, maybe make sure that strange dogs don't get to visit and bring fleas with them into the house. And we know breeders hold the key here. So takeaway here is know your breed's risks, advise owners accordingly on what to look out for, what age they should be sterilising their, their dog for um, maximum long-term chance of great health and low cancer risk. We should be educating our owners and encouraging them to keep their dog at a healthy weight, to have, uh, give their dog a natural, healthy diet, avoid known carcinogens, using safe toys and bowls. You can even tuck some of those into your puppy bag to take home. Uh, encourage them to use natural lawn chemicals, pesticides, shampoos, cleaners and furnishings site Wi-Fi away from pets and minimise as much as possible the use of veterinary products. Please do download the free guide, How to Prevent Cancer in Dogs. I've designed it so that you can actually um, give it straight to your owners and you can get that at elitebreederformula.com forward slash free hyphen cancer hyphen guide. And when you land there, this is what you'll see. Thank you very much for listening to this talk. Um, I hope that together we can help lots and lots of dogs avoid cancer, avoid early death and suffering for them and their owners by sharing this information. Thanks for your attention. Bye-bye.